Well, among the presentations here tonight, uh, Maria Faulkner and Ronan Doherty have done a case study on, on Carol Lacey, who's with us. It, it sounds very interesting, Carol, and we spoke to them earlier on, and they were giving us a little bit of a background as to what it was all about. How interesting did you find the whole exercise? Yeah, very interesting. Um, Maria and Ronan have done, done great work there, um, along with myself. Um, I suppose I st studied a Masters last year and just finished it recently yeah. on sports performance, so this whole idea of uh, uh, physiological demands and Gaelic football and everything is, is new to me and um, I'm finding it quite interesting and it's great to get involved with this health and wellbeing conference here with Donegal GAA. Yeah. It sounds very up there, uh, you know, listening to the two of them, they're really into what they do, but it has to be a huge help in terms of preparing yourself for the sort of level that you're playing at, Carl. Yeah, um, I suppose it's, it's huge now, the science that's out there, it goes behind um, you know, players and you know, player monitoring and um, the dem demands that it takes to be an intercounty footballer. Um, you know, it's there's a lot goes in the preparation. Um, there's a lot of different recovery strategies that go go into after games and after training to get your body and your mind right again for the following session. And yeah. you know, listening to Marie and and Ronan, they they know it all in terms of nutrition. And um, you know, it's it's great to get that knowledge and have that knowledge within the county. And I know our own backroom team in, in the county setup at the moment is excellent in terms of um, you know sports science. And um, with Paul Fisher in there doing strength conditioning and our lead physiotherapist Dermot Simpson has been with us the last couple of years yeah. and you know he's he's done his research and he knows everything and you know, we've different guys in as well doing player monitoring so it's it's at a very high level at the moment Charlie and yeah. long may it continue. And it's interesting talking to someone yourself like yourself Carl because you've been around the county scene for quite some time I mean the difference when you started in the county team and what was expected of players compared to what's expected now Day and night, I, su I would suggest. <laughs> day and night, exactly. Um, I suppose when I first came in, you know, we, you only had to worry about the hour and a half or two hours that you're training. Yeah. Once you left the training pitch, that was up to the following, you know, two nights later. But now it's every day, um, every minute of your time that you can get spare um, to prepare your body to be in the best possible shape it can be for the next session. Whether it's going to the swimming pool, um, doing gym sessions, getting hydrotherapy for recovery. Um, getting your nutrition right, get making sure you're eating the right foods. Um, you know, all that's it's it takes a lot of time and yeah. as I say, any spare time and, and for Gilly Fupplers we're not full time so um obviously boys have to go out working as well and and get the right right balance. But as I say, any spare time you can get, uh, you have to be doing something and, and thinking ahead because other counties are at it and if you want to compete at the highest level then that's what you've got to do. Yeah, I mean that is the real challenge Carl because we, we have to remember and sometimes it's difficult to do that that guys like yourself and the other fellows in the county squad are amateurs you know there's other things to do you're not professionals like the rugby players and like the soccer players but we expect the same from you and I suppose it's got to the stage almost and it has to be this way you expect the same from yourselves. Yeah, as I say, listen, you want you want to be the best team in the country, and you want to reach the highest levels. And as a player, you're you're going to do what it takes. Um, you know, whether it's, you know people might not think this, but nipping away from work for a, a quick hour to get to the pool to do your stretching, yeah. rather than you know maybe sacrificing other things that you could be doing in that hour. Um, every G GA player in the country is doing that at the moment, um, and you have to if you if you want to compete. Um, you know, within your own squad and against other teams and um, because competition for places is, is high and other players are doing it in your position and if you don't do it then you're going to lose out and you're not going to get starting and that's what it's all about. Sure. I mean health and well-being is what they're calling this conference tonight and information and that's what it's all about and that extends way beyond the physical side of it as well Carol because you've got to have the head right uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as well to be able to sustain what's expected of you and if that's not right you're just not going to be able to, to be up there playing at county level. Yeah, and it's it's all about the preparation, Charlie, that, that goes into competing on match day. Like, and as you said, the physical side of things, just getting your body in, in complete the right shape. Whether it's you know the strength work in the gym, um, I said if it's recovery, if you're stretching, if you've injury, doing your rehab work with your physio and your your medical team. Um, it's you know the body is amazing what it, what it can do, but at the same time you know it can very easily break down as well. And you know there's huge demands on a Gaelic football player at the moment. Um, so. I suppose just getting the right balance um, is the key to it and as I said thankfully in Donegal we have great support team around us as players and I know players probably always get the 
the credit or the manager might get the credit for the victory, but you know there's a hell of a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes in terms of your sports science and, and your backroom and your sport team. So um, I just you know I, I'd like to acknowledge that as well. That we have a fantastic team within the Donegal GA senior setup, and um, as I say, we'll we'll keep working together, and hopefully it'll be a, a long summer for Donegal this year. Yeah. Well, finally, Maria and Ronan, we did our best to extract something out of them as regards what we're going to see in terms of the case study and Carl Lacey. Any surprises for us when, it, when they presented here, Carl? Did you find anything about yourself that you weren't too sure about? Um, not really, no. I'm, I'm happy enough with what we've come up with um, in the conclusion. But, yes, it's, it's interesting and you know, we'll, we'll keep it as interesting as possible and we'll not go too much into the science of the whole thing. Um, you know, a lot of it is basic and I'm, I think a lot of it people already know. Um, but it's, I know people like to hear what other teams are doing and other sports are doing. So um, we'll give the people in there an insight on, onto what it takes to be an intercounty footballer and hopefully they'll enjoy it. Okay, I look forward to it. Thanks for talking to us, Carrie.